So I want to introduce limits of sequences. This is going to be kind of the focus of what we're going to do with, with sequences. We're going to try to find uh, the limit, what, what a, a uh, sequence of numbers is approaching. So this idea of a limit is going to be just like what we were doing with functions. Um, but we want to figure out what, this, the, what the sequence is doing as n goes to infinity. So if we write out infinitely many terms of this sequence, what number is the sequence going to? Sometimes the sequences are going to have a limit, sometimes they're not. And, and we'll talk about how we figure that out. Uh, a lot of what we're going to do, we're going to try to actually find the limit. Um, a lot of what we're going to do, we're not going to be able to find the limit, even if we know that it exists. That's kind of a weird thing about, about sequences, is that there are some sequences that we can say, Yes, it's going to converge to a certain limit, but we don't know what that certain limit is. And uh, it's just kind of a weird thing about the way it works. Now, this is the definition of the limit for sequences. You don't need to write this down, but I want to show it to you. It's called a, and it's actually not a delta epsilon, but it's an epsilon, um, epsilon definition that, well, it reads like this. A sequence has a limit L as n approaches infinity. If given any positive number epsilon, there is a positive number m, so that for all n is greater than m, we have the absolute value of the difference between a sub n and L is less than epsilon. Makes a lot of sense, right? I want to kind of show you a picture of what this means, because... You don't need to know this definition. You don't need to be able to apply this definition. But you do need to know what it means for a limit to, uh, to have a limit. I'm sorry, for a sequence to have a limit. That's what I meant to say. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to plot a sequence and show you what it means to, uh, to comply with this definition. So let's say we have a sequence that looks like this. Um, you can see that these numbers here, the, this sequence is approaching some limit, right? You guys see that? So if I were to draw a line here, a horizontal line, you can see that the values... Let me move that just a little bit. Um, the values of this sequence are approaching that green line there, right? Well, this right here, a sub n minus l... If that green line is L, then A sub N minus L is the distance from the, the point, uh, that number, to the limit, right? Does that make sense? So this right here is that absolute value, that distance right there. And you notice that this distance is doing what? It's getting smaller, right? Well, what we do is we choose a small value for epsilon. We say we want this difference to be within this range. So let's say I choose epsilon to be like 0.5, okay, just for example's sake. Let's say epsilon is 0.5. Then what I would do is look at all these points, and I'm going to just say this is, let me change the color here. Okay, so let's just say that these purple lines are 0.5 away from our limit. What happens here is after a certain point, before a certain point, these, these points are further away than 0.5, right? They're, that distance is too big. But after a certain point, after this one here, so once n equals 5, then everything else is within that 0.5. Does that make sense? So once I reach a certain point along the n-axis, so going out to the right, it gets to a point where all of these are within this distance of my limit. Okay? What this definition says is that I can pick any number. I could pick 0.1 or 0.01 or 0 0.0001. I could pick any positive number, and at some point, all of the, the values are going to be within that. So it's getting closer and closer and closer, um, and it doesn't have to be right away, because you can see right here, these are not that close. But after, uh, after we get to here, then it is. Everything is within that range. Does that kind of make sense? Basically, this is the same as the definition of the limit of a function, um, except we, 
Well, and actually, you could write the definition of the limit of a function this way. We just didn't do it. Um, so it, it's just approaching some value. Um, there are ways that the limit wouldn't exist if the limit or if the numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger uh, without bound. So instead of looking like this, they might look like um, this and just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, then there's not going to be a limit. Okay. Um, it's also possible that we have something that looks like this, where the numbers just go back and forth, but never get closer to a particular value. Okay, so that would be another case where the limit doesn't exist. So there are lots of ways that the limit could not exist. Um, what we want to know is when it does. And, and that's what we're going to try to figure out. So the way we say this is we say the limit of a sub n converges to L if the limit does exist. And we write it like this. This is the same limit notation we use with functions. So we would say the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals L. And this L is going to be a number. It might be like 8 or 12 or 0 or pi or whatever. Um, so we would say the limit of a sub n converges to pi. If it doesn't converge, then it diverges. And diverges just means that there's no limit. It could diverge because it oscillates, which we saw that with functions. It could diverge because it increases or decreases without bound. Um, there, there are actually a lot of ways that it could diverge. Um, and we really don't like those. We want the ones that converge. These rules here are actually the exact same rules that we had for limits of functions. So if we had two functions that had a limit and we added them together, then the limit of their sum would be the sum of their limits um, or difference. It works for differences too. Mm -hmm. So what this says is that if the limit of a sub n is L and the limit of b sub n is M, then when we add a sub n to b sub n, then the limit is going to be L plus M. If we multiply a sub n times b sub n, then the limit is going to be L times M. If we divide them, then we divide the limits. Or if we multiply, if if a sequence converges and we multiply every term in the sequence by some constant, let's say we double it, then the limit's going to double. That's what this constant multiple rule says here. So these rules are all the same rules that we had for limits with functions. It just works for sequences too.